In previous tutorials, I've shown you how to use the clipping and the masking to use textures as part of your image. But what happens when you want to use textures as the image? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to use textures within your projects in Inkscape. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you can see on screen, I have created two little graphics. One is just a text graphic and the other one is just a little logo that I made. Now this isn't an interesting logo by any stretch of the imagination. It is just put together very, very quickly. I thought I would use the saw and the wood grain from a tree stump to make a nice little wood mill logo. Now what happens when you want to elevate your designs and make them a little bit more, well, professional? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly that. Now, let me just move this away and we're going to start with the text. Now, when it comes to using textures, I am going to import one of the images that I got from Pexels. And for this one, I'm just going to use a metal texture that I found by clicking and dragging from my location on my hard drive and then clicking and dragging it over the top of my canvas like so. Now I'm going to reduce the size of this just so I can make sure that it's covering all of my text like so and then I'm just going to move this off to the side and now we have to use trace bitmap. If you're wondering how to use trace bitmap I will link my previous video on that feature in the top right corner but for now I'm just going to go to path trace bitmap and the trace bitmap window will open on the right hand side. Now this is going to be what we get if we click apply right now. As you can see there's quite a lot in the bottom right corner but it looks pretty much white in the top left. However when we actually click apply you can see the difference it makes with the black over the top. Now if I was to click and drag this down and then zoom in, you can see exactly what has happened. Now for this, I am just going to change the color because this is now its own object. And if I click white, it has changed the color completely to white. But this allows us to be able to see it clearly. But now we can position and get all the texture correct that we want to have. And as you can see, now that looks pretty good. However, it is still a separate object. Well, we can remedy that simply by coming to the text and selecting the text as well as the trace bitmap that we just created. And then you can go to Path, Difference. And now we have the texture cut into the text. And I'll be able to show you this better if I create a circle. Let's make this blue. And then using my Select tool, I'm going to drop it to the bottom. And as you can see, we now have our grunge text. So that is how you can transfer the texture from an image like this and transfer it onto your objects. But what if you want to change your logo or your design and have that on a texture? With it being a wood mill, it is wood. So I've now just imported a wood texture that I can use and I'm going to basically match this so it's covering all of the canvas. And then I'm going to use my select tool and drop it down to the bottom. And we have something that looks a little bit like this. 
Now, as you can see, this is still very, very black. And it doesn't look like it's part of the same thing. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a drop shadow and we are going to lower the opacity of this and that way we can make it look like it's carved into the wood. So the first step that we need to do is we need to duplicate this design. So we're going to right click, select duplicate and now we have two different logos. For the bottom one, we are going to go to our fill and stroke menu. So open up your fill and stroke menu right here. But if you haven't got it open by default, you can find it on the toolbar here. Open fill and stroke. And if you are running a previous version of Inkscape, like a 1.3, for example, you will be able to find this toolbar up at the top underneath the file bar right here. Now, once you have your fill and stroke menu open, you can just lower the opacity. Now, this doesn't make it look like it's cut into the wood, but it does make it look like it is part of the wood. So that's why we created this copy right here. So now with the other logo placed over the top, as you can see, we are going to go to our filters shadows and glows drop shadow and then we're going to turn on live preview and straight away as you can see it now looks way more convincing like it's already been carved into the wood now you can play around with these settings but anything above two is not going to give you the look that you're wanting however i'm thinking if you just play around and have it going off in the same horizontally that it does in the vertically you can get a much more uniform look and then you can play around with the blur and how much blur you would like so these are the settings that i am going with for now and what i want to show you is there is one more step you can do to make this look a whole lot more 3d as you can see, I have a blur radius of 1, I have the horizontal set to 2, and the vertical set to 0. So it looks like the light is coming from the left-hand side and casting a shadow on all the left edges, like here. Now, in order to show you the next step, I'm just going to move this one out of the way. I am holding control while I slide it off to the side. And now I'm just going to select this one, right click and duplicate again. Now, when we go back to our filters, we are going to go shadows and glows like we did before and drop shadow. Then we are yet again going to turn on the live preview. And this time, instead of having plus two on the horizontal offset, I'm going to reduce it. So it says minus two. And as you can see, we now have the shadow coming from the right hand side instead. Now we can go to our blur color tab. And with the blur color tab set, we can now go white. And as you can see, we now have this effect coming from the opposite direction. That is exactly what I need. So I'm going to click apply and then we're going to close out of it. And now when I select the original drop shadow that we did and we layer this over the top, it looks way better like it is carved into the actual wood. Now is the time where you can just simply select the different shapes and then alter exactly how deep or how black you want the logo to be underneath so now as you can see we have turned the wooden mill logo design that i did into a carving into an actual piece of wood and that is how you can use textures to elevate your designs if you found this useful then please consider hitting subscribe and of course if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment section down below 
Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.